This was by far the most devastating loss of the night for me. Andrew Gillum was running uh, up against proud Trump lackey Ron DeSantis in Florida's governor's race and lost to him by a slim margin, despite polling having Gillum up by five points. Gillum also had an incredibly strong debate performance against Ron DeSantis and ran a really progressive populist campaign during the primary, which he kind of did away with during the general election. Uh, I'll get more into his loss in a second, but here's what happened. Ron DeSantis was elected governor of Florida on Tuesday, handing President Trump an important victory and extending the Republican Party's dominance in the nation's third largest state. Mr. DeSantis, a 40-year-old former congressman, fended off his opponent, Andrew Gillum, one of the strongest candidates Florida Democrats had fielded in years. Republicans have now won every election for governor since 1998. Mr. DeSantis pledged to choose constitutionalist judges. He will get to name replacements in January to three liberal-leaning justices who are term-limited on the state Supreme Court, fight toxic algae blooms, protect military veterans, and keep scholarships for low-income students to attend private schools. It's also important to note that as of this morning, um, Gillum is closing the lead. He has officially conceded, but that doesn't really mean anything. So if the votes do turn around, I mean, there's 99% of the vote total, and I still think it's very likely that DeSantis wins. This could change, but uh, as of now, DeSantis has won, and it's looking very likely that he will win. So here are my first reactions. Firstly, when I was reporting on Trump rallies down in Florida, I could feel the palpable enthusiasm for DeSantis and Trump at these rallies. I mean, De DeSantis was uninspiring as it gets, but he was linked to Trump, and people were for it. And a lot of people at these rallies weirdly said that the environment was their top concern. The algae blooms, uh, as uh, the New York Times just mentioned there, and many were unhappy with the way that Rick Scott, who's now going to be a senator, had dealt with it. It was affecting their businesses on the coast, and DeSantis made this a core of his campaign. Former U.S. Representative Ron DeSantis says he'll work to halt the green algae flowing from Lake Okeechobee into state rivers, ban fracking, study the red tide plaguing the Gulf Coast, and restore the Everglades. Look, I know this may be shocking to some people, and who knows if DeSantis will ever follow through with this. I mean, he's a staunch conservative in the House who has followed Trump's EPA deregulation in lockstep and refuses to mention climate change at all. But at its core, he addressed economic anxiety in Florida, and that's connected to the environment here. So that resonated with people. I know it's hard to believe, but my sense is that that was a cornerstone of why he won. From what I spoke to uh, when I spoke to people down there. Secondly, look, Florida is more racist than even I thought, and I've been to Trump rallies there, as I've mentioned. I know uh, it's racist, but voters there clearly did not have an issue with a major candidate basically calling Gillum a monkey with the least subtle dog whistle in human history on the first day of the campaign. There were smears from Breitbart about him being for crime in Florida, et cetera, just disgusting stuff. And it looks like it worked as of now. Thirdly, when are we going to stop calling Florida purple a toss up and start calling it what it is, a red state now? They've had Republican governors for decades now. They're consistently trending red. It's not a moderate red either. DeSantis is a serious right winger, as was Rick Scott, who they just very likely elected to the U.S. Senate, as I said, we have to stop underestimating the conservative stronghold in Florida. And finally, Andrew Gillum, why, why, why did you campaign with Hillary Clinton? Her approval rating, once again, is lower than Trump's in most parts of the country. I understand accepting Obama's help in stumping for you, who is polling quite high. Obama is popular, and you know what? He's inspiring on the stump. He gets people riled up for the candidates that he stumps for. We can have disagreements on what he did as president, but he's a great campaigner. He's an awesome campaigner. He did awesome in 2008. He did great against Mitt Romney, where he just pummeled the guy. He's a great person to stump for you. Hillary Clinton, she's as inspiring as a stick. I don't even know what an animate object I can compare her to. And her approval rating is awful. She's toxic. When will Democratic candidates get it through their head? Stop accepting her help. Say thank you very much 
and walk away. This was an incredibly frustrating race. I am terrified, terrified that DeSantis will gerrymander the entire state so that Republicans will take the state of Florida, including the Electoral College and presidential races, so thoroughly that a Democrat will never win in Florida again. That really could happen. He will increase voter suppression. He will not do anything to address systemic inequality. But you know what? There is one silver lining. I promise you, Amendment 4 passed in Florida. Ex-felons who will be able, weren't able to vote before, they'll be able to vote now, excluding murder, sex offenses, et cetera. Just people who were likely drug offenders. That is a small victory in a sea of bad ones in the state of Florida. Like what you see? I hope so, thank you. So click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from Rebel HQ.